Hello, my name is Jen Cameron, and on behalf of ORCA, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining this author presentation. I have the pleasure of introducing Grant Lawrence. Grant is an award-winning author, radio host, singer, and columnist. Today, Grant will be telling about his debut picture book, Bailey the Bat and the Tangled Moose, a suspenseful, suspenseful and adventurous story featuring a kind, brave, and very resourceful bat. Before I hand things over to Grant, I just want to mention that there will be a time for questions at the end, so please enter them in the Q&A area. Uh, so without further ado, here's Grant. Thank you very much, Jen, and thank you, uh, everyone, for your attention this morning and for your interest and for being here. So as uh, Jen mentioned, I'm the author of uh, Bailey the Bat and the Tangled Moose, and uh, it is beautifully illustrated by Nomi Jeanette Landry. I'll uh, talk about her in just a moment. This is uh, my first children's book. I uh, was, well, I still am. Uh, an author of creative nonfiction for adults. But uh, since I have two little kids, this one came about. So the story of how this book came to be, up here in Canada, where I live in Vancouver, I'm a CBC radio journalist and an author, as I mentioned, and a friend from the CBC moved over to Orca Publishing. She got in touch with me and she asked if I was interested in writing a historic a young adult novel. But uh, there's that old cliche in the writing business, write what you know. And I didn't really have any young adults in my life at the time. I had kids. My kids were young. They were four and six then. Now they're five and eight. And so what did I know? I knew uh, storybooks, picture books, kids books by the uh, truckload. Uh, you know, if you have kids, you know how many you go through and how much they are adored. And so I called uh, Kirsty back and I said, yeah, about that young adult uh, novel you were uh, asking me to put together. How about a story about an insomniac bat who gets up to all sorts of adventures during the day while the rest of the bat colony is asleep. And there was kind of silence on the other end of the line. And then there was a kind of like a, uh, okay. That's sort of like if you order a pepperoni pizza and a Hawaiian shows up and like, how about this one? So after a bit of process, here we are. It actually happened. So Bailey is a little brown gender neutral bat who besides not being able to sleep is very uh, mischievous, very curious and naughty, but also brave and loyal and loves the feeling of sunshine on bat wings, which makes Bailey unique in the colony and the nocturnal world. So why bats? Well, besides bats getting... Uh, what I consider a pretty unfair shake in the last couple of years, the story about my connection with bats goes back to my childhood. My family has a cabin in a very remote location of British Columbia called Desolation Sound. It's one of the largest marine parks in Canada, the largest on our West Coast. And for most of my life, and certainly all of my kids' lives, they're now five and eight, uh, this little colony of bats, little brown bats, that's their species, has lived in the cedar shake overhang roof of our porch. And every summer night, just after sunset, these little brown bats descend from the roof like fighter pilots, and they scatter pell-mell into the twilight, searching for mosquitoes and noceums and other insects, which make up their diet. And when my family first arrived, and my dad had been building this cabin for a while, and I was a little kid, and my sister was little, and my mom, when these bats emerged, we just dove for cover. We were freaked out. But my dad stayed at the picnic table as they fluttered around him, like he was some sort of uh, 
like he was a uh, like they were the, the disciples of Dracula or something. And we couldn't believe it looking through the cabin windows. And he said, don't worry about it. They don't come near you. They've got an auto sonar that bounces them off objects like humans. And so we went outside and we've been at one with the bats ever since. And they've always fascinated me. And that fascination has been passed down to my kids. And so Bailey emerged as a character in my children's bedtime stories. So when they couldn't sleep, they were always asking about the bats or many times they were asking about those bats in the cabin. They share a room. And so I started telling stories about a particular bat. I started shaping the stories as adventures. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's take a sip of water here. While shaping <clears throat> and slipping in actual bat facts and bat vocabulary. So the kids were actually being entertained and learning something about the world's only self-propelled flying mammal. They deserve a lot of props for figuring that out. And it worked. Uh, there is now in my family a long saga about Bailey, much thicker than this volume uh, that my kids know all about and they are now uh, bat experts. So one of the first uh, Bailey adventures I told the kids was this one about the tangled moose. And this story was kind of, you know, it was, they're, they're, they're like improv when you're telling your kids stories at night. I don't plan them. But this one was partially inspired by the ancient fable of the lion and the mouse, where a mouse frees a lion netted by hunters. But I thought, what would happen if that mouse couldn't free the lion? Then what? And that sent me on the path of this story, which includes, as I mentioned, themes of naughtiness and family rules and relationships working together for a common goal, heroism, and ultimately consequences for disobeying mom, no matter what the outcome. And so after reading hundreds, I would say, I would guess maybe thousands of books to my kids over the years, maybe you can relate. I have been able to gauge, I believe, what at least captures my kids' imagination and what doesn't. And high stakes always grabs my son. So that's what I wanted to create in this book. The bat hears a moaning in the forest. He, Bailey sneaks out of the roost. Bailey discovers a tangled moose attempts a rescue, but it doesn't quite work out the way Bailey initially hoped and teeters on complete disaster without a big coordinated effort. So what I'll do is I will just read you a bit of the story now from Bailey the Bat and the Tangled Moose. So here we go. Bailey the bat couldn't sleep. Bailey was supposed to be asleep, like Mama and all the other little brown bats high in their roosts in the warm hollow tree in the thick green forest. Little brown bats were supposed to sleep all day long. But Bailey the bat wasn't like the rest of the colony. Bailey could never sleep during the day. There was too much to see and do when the sun was shining. Every morning before bed, Bailey's mama would wrap her wing around the little bat and whisper, get a good day's rest, Bailey. We're going to be busy tonight. There are plenty of mosquitoes to be eaten in the darkness of these woods. Do not leave the roost while the rest of us are sleeping. Do you understand? Bailey's furry brown head would nod. Yes, Mama. But while all the other little brown bats were hanging upside down asleep, Bailey the bat was wide awake. On this particular morning, Bailey heard a very loud, very sad sound coming from somewhere deep 
in the forest. <clears throat> it sounded almost like an upset foghorn. <clears throat> Bailey tried to ignore it, but couldn't. Bailey squinted out into the morning sun from the colony's cozy tree, but couldn't see anything. The loud, sad noise continued. <coughs> Bailey glanced nervously around the hollow tree. Bailey's mama and all the other little brown bats were sleeping with their heads tucked beneath their wings. Quietly and with a thumping heart, Bailey crawled towards the entrance of the roost. Feeling very guilty, Bailey looked back one more time before taking flight into the bright sunshine. Bailey the bat had to know what was making that loud, sad sound. So we'll, we'll just leave it right there. A, a little bit of a cliffhanger, even though I pretty much have indicated what's happening. Uh, but I will also mention that the beautiful artwork found within this book is by a, a French Acadian illustrator from Moncton, New Brunswick, and her name is Nomi Jeanette Landry. And so with me in Vancouver on the West Coast and Nomi on the East Coast, it's been an amazing pan-Canadian collaboration. And luckily also, uh, in Canada, can, moose and little brown bats are plentiful in both BC and New Brunswick, both mostly forested provinces. And so that is it for me. I hope that Bailey the Bat and the Tangled Moose captures the imagination of your young readers and maybe sets uh, hearts aflutter. And who knows, maybe there will be more uh, Bailey adventures further down the trail for uh, for us to enjoy. So thank you very much. And uh, back to you, Jen. Thanks so much, Grant. I have a few questions. Um, got some time. So um, first one is, how do you explain to children reading this book that like Bailey, sometimes it's okay to break the rules? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a tough one because I've I've had one parent said, well, I was a little concerned when Bailey is sneaking out of the roost uh, in the middle of the day. And, but then that same parent was quite happy to see that there were consequences for the actions uh, for Bailey's disobedience at the end, no matter what the outcome, as I mentioned earlier. But I think uh, when it comes to, taking action, I think uh, it comes down to the uh, famous Spike Lee movie, Do the Right Thing. And I think that that's what we try to impose in our children all the time. You know, uh, children are born to, b believe it or not, as, as parents and educators and librarians, we sometimes try to keep our kids as safe as possible, but our kids were actually born to take risks and to navigate the world, uh, to check out those monkey bars and see how high they can climb. And sometimes that results in reaching the top and sometimes it results in an owie. And that's how kids learn. And so I, with my kids, I always promote taking risks, finding what their limits are, uh, pushing the limits, and also when they see injustice to do the right thing. Great, thank you. Okay, I like this one. Um, the depiction of Bailey seemed very familiar. Do you hmm. have a Bailey in your life? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I have a very, very, very active uh, son who uh, I mentioned is eight, and uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I I wrote the story um, for I I one thing I I would say that probably I mean I think when Bailey sneaks out of the roost, which is how pretty much all of the Bailey bedtime stories start, that is just shocking to my kids. 
because they can't imagine leaving the safety of our roost uh, to go out there into the wide world and, and on their own. So, but my son is, he doesn't sneak off or anything like that. Thank God. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the other thing I did in the book was I tried to uh, create, a, a, I don't know if it's society is the right word, but a world of matriarchs. And so uh, Bailey has a single mom at this point and Bailey's mom is also in charge of the colony. And later there is a wolf pack that is met and the alpha of the wolf pack is also a female wolf uh, because I believe that uh, we do live in a matriarchal society when you get right down to it. Great. Okay. Speaking at, and touching on what you said about the wolf pack, um, I'm wondering why you chose wolves to be a part of the story. Did you well, consider any other animals? Yeah. I mean, basically I was thinking of animal societies and animal communities. And so I was thinking about, I mean, bats next to humans group in massive uh, when we talk about mammals they group in massive colonies and uh and so i was thinking of like okay so the, we've got the the bat colony on one side and we've got the moose in the middle that are not a pack animal they're they're more either solitary or or small family units and then we've got i i wanted some other sort of opposing uh, group, society, community, or pack. And so wolves came to mind. Coyotes were also a possibility, but I needed something that, that was a collective. So it was two opposing forces in a way that would, uh, that one would outsmart the other. That's what I was, I was trying to do. And there is a, a look of the wolves naturally think they are much smarter and more powerful than the bats, but there's only about four, the pack is only about four or five wolves and there's a lot of bats. And so that gets into that theme of uh, strengthening numbers, uh, power in small deeds. Uh, small deeds when done with many people can turn into large change. And the, the leader of the wolf pack gives Bailey a look of recognition Go like, wow, you, you pulled that off. <laughs> Amazing. And, and then the wolf pack uh, takes off. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Grant. Okay, I think um, we've got time for one more question. So um, let's see. I've got a question about the format. Um, yeah. So just about um, kind of the longer picture book, like the, the picture book with more text and... Um, you know, why you went for that um, format to tell this particular story? Yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of a, it's a bridge book. So it, it would appeal to uh, younger kids that are being read to, but it also appeals to those readers that are moving into a slightly longer form, bridging between the picture book and the chapter book. And so the vocabulary is a little, I wouldn't say heavier, but it's a little larger than your average picture book. The story has a very definitive uh, beginning, middle, and end. There is considerable rising action and stakes, all of which you find in chapter books, but not necessarily in uh, picture books. Yes, some, but not always. And so I wanted to bridge those two to, to find that uh, area that would appeal to uh, emerging readers that are reading on their own seven, eight, even nine years old, and then, uh, but also appeal to much younger readers that just are, are thrilled with animals and adventure and, um, and storylines like this, where uh, what's going to happen and, and stakes and, and excitement and, uh, and teamwork and all, all those types of elements. So I think that's what I was going for. But again, I go back to that, right, what you know, I mean, I'm seeing my own kids on that uh, that edge of of uh breaking out in, uh, into their own reading and so this was maybe a 
a kind of a, a prompt for them as well to, uh, you know, and they'll say, well, what does guilty mean? Or what does grounded mean? Or, you know, and so there's those glossary of terms. They don't even ask about the bat terms. They're, they they take them in and they absorb them like roost and colony and fangs and that sort of thing. So that's uh, that's that was the the goal there to try to a- appeal to a broader range of, of readers, both um, read to and reading. That's great. Thank you. Great answer. Well, thank you so much, Grant. That is the, the uh, extent of our time. I really okay. appreciate you participating and thank you everybody for coming. Check out our booth to find out more about Bailey the Bat and lots of other great books and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks so thank much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.